When I report on all this research that's happening with multiple sclerosis, I don't know whether any of it is going to make it to the next step or not. But now, after nearly a year, I've been able to make a video giving you an update on something that, based on a number of views and the comments that I received, you were all pretty excited about. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam and I've been living with multiple sclerosis for almost 40 years. Back in September of 2023, I published a video about a new treatment strategy for multiple sclerosis, and they called it an inverse vaccine. In other words, instead of making you resistant to a foreign invader, it would teach your body not to damage its own myelin, which in effect would cure MS. I found this clip from WGN in Chicago that interviewed the lead researcher on the project that we talked about in the first video. I think he does a nice job of explaining what the purpose of this research was and the advances that they made. So let's listen. A regular vaccine rev revs up immunity to fight an invader, but a regulatory vaccine, an inverse vaccine, revs up, revs up regulatory mechanisms to protect your own cells. These diseases like autoimmunity and allergy are usually treated by broad immune suppression, which has its downsides. It would be fantastic to develop an approach that could do it in a very specific way so you leave the rest of immunity intact. The inverse vaccine works like other vaccines by delivering a message to T and B cells, the cells that help us fight infections, bacteria, and viruses. But instead of telling the cells what to attack, the inverse vaccine tells them what not to destroy. There was quite a bit of unknown bits and pieces about the immunobiology there. So we, we came to understand that and then demonstrated in preclinical models that we could do things like treat uh, autoimmunity, like treat multiple sclerosis in preclinical models. Here's how the vaccine works. A nanomolecule loaded with cell material meant to be tolerated by the body is sent to the liver. The liver is where T and B cells are schooled on what to attack and what not to attack. In the liver, that message is interpreted by so-called antigen presenting cells presented to T and B cells that then turns on these regulatory effects. In their lab, Dr. Jeffrey Hubble and his colleagues simulated a multiple sclerosis-like disease. The inverse vaccine stopped the immune system in mouse models from destroying myelin sheath on nerve cells. Even more promising, the formula appears to work even after damage has begun. Not today, not tomorrow, but after a full series of clinical trials, we hope to be able to have uh, treatments that are sort of one every, I don't know, six months, every year, that could undo your immunity to that one particular disease, but leave the rest of your immunity intact. And now just in case you're still a little hazy on what is an antigen, and what is a regulatory T cell, this is a video that came out about two months after that other one. I think it does a good job of explaining the basics and it might help us understand. Scientists are working on a vaccine that does the opposite of what most vaccines do. It will make your immune system forget. Your immune system has superpowers, like the ability to tailor its response to threats. Specialized cells remember threats they've seen before and go after only that, and not other stuff. Otherwise, getting sick might be a lot more miserable than it already is. It does this through T cells as well as the antibodies produced by B cells, both of which are able to recognize and target specific antigens. An antigen refers to anything that can stimulate the immune system to create antibodies, whether or not a response is actually needed. Unfortunately, sometimes immune cells pick the wrong target, such as the proteins made by your own cells. This response to normally harmless self antigens is what leads to autoimmune diseases. Jerks of the your own body attacking itself variety include multiple sclerosis, celiac disease, and type 1 diabetes. Currently, one way of treating autoimmune disease is with immunosuppressive drugs. They work in a few different ways, but in general, they tamp down immune activity across the board, meaning the patient's autoimmune symptoms might improve, but in exchange, they're more vulnerable to infection and even cancer. So 
not ideal. Thankfully, treating autoimmunity with targeted tools is an active area of research. One possible solution is backwards or inverse vaccines. In a paper published in 2019 in Nature Biomedical Engineering, researchers based in the US and Switzerland hypothesized that they could use the liver to tell your immune system to shut up. It's fine. Everything's fine. Here. Their strategy would enable selective immune forgetting rather than relying on global immune suppression. It would theoretically work because the liver plays a huge role in immune decision making. This is because the liver is involved in filtering blood and breaking down toxins, but also debris from dead cells. If the liver can handle a molecule, there's no need to mount an immune response, so it gets to judge which molecules your immune cells see as dangerous or innocuous. This process relies on regulatory T cells. Instead of attacking, these T cells calm things down and help the body remember that a particular antigen is no big deal. Proteins released from dying cells have specific tags on them made of sugars. The sugar tag Tags are these molecules, or P glue and P gal for short. These tags are sort of like shipping labels directing those antigens to the liver. There, they get processed by cells in the liver that talk to the immune system, and what those cells are saying is, this lives here. It's okay. So a P glue or P gal tag should, in theory, make an antigen head straight for the liver, where it should run into the immune system in a nice, safe, everything is okay here kind of context. In order to test this idea, researchers injected mice with a protein from eggs called ovalbumin to kind of give them an egg allergy. Sometimes the ovalbumin had the sugar tags and sometimes it didn't. They also gave the mice a bunch of T cells that they could easily follow in order to track the mice's immune response. When they followed up a week later, they found that the number of ovalbumin specific T cells in the liver was higher in the mice who'd gotten tagged ovalbumin. That suggests the tags were helping the liver recognize ovalbumin as harmless. T cell numbers were higher in the tag group, but this didn't mean those mice were having an enhanced immune response. These were regulatory T cells, the calm down T cells I mentioned earlier. So, all right, we can use sugar tags to prevent a fake egg allergy, but can we do this with something more closely resembling a real disease? The researchers turned to a mouse model of type 1 diabetes, in which T cells are programmed to recognize insulin producing cells in the pancreas. Recognize and attack. If these T cells are injected into a mouse, they tend to go into seek and destroy mode. Those T cells are going after an antigen called P31, so the mice first got injected with these T cells. On the same day, they were injected with P31 with and without sugar tags. Mice that got P31 without a sugar tag very quickly developed high blood sugar. However, in the mice that were vaccinated with P31 plus a P glue tag, the immune system was able to prevent glucose levels spiking even in the presence of the attack T cells. The researchers showed this was because the attack T cells weren't attacking. Basically, the vaccine was able to train the T cells that recognized P31, showing them that the liver thought everything was fine. That taught the T cells that they could chill out, transform into regulatory T cells, and let the pancreatic cells get on with producing insulin. Basically, the inverse vaccine kept the mice from developing type 1 diabetes for a long time, even though they were prone to it. But that's not what you're typically going to run into in the real world. Usually, when a patient goes to their doctor, it's with an autoimmune disease already in progress. So the question becomes whether this approach works as a cure, not just prevention. In another paper in 2023, the research group published results demonstrating the strategy worked for treating mice who had a mouse version of multiple sclerosis. In multiple sclerosis, the insulating layer around the nerve fibers called myelin is attacked by the immune system. Vaccinating mice with myelin tagged with PGAL decreased MS symptoms and calmed down their overachieving T cells. They also showed the PGAL tagged vaccine strategy worked to suppress immune response response in a non-human primate, another step closer to showing efficacy in humans. Even better than that, a few early human trials employing the sugar tag inverse vaccine approach are already happening. A phase 1 trial for an inverse vaccine for celiac disease has already wrapped up, and a phase 1 trial for multiple sclerosis is in progress at the time of filming. Now, phase 1 trials are super early. They mostly just prove that a therapy is safe to give to humans, not whether or not it works. Still, you love to see it. Vaccines have revolutionized the fight against disease by helping our immune systems learn to recognize threats before they occur. Inverse vaccines could be the way we teach our immune systems to forget. You probably noticed how many steps are involved in getting these ideas into tested and validated treatments that can be put into the marketplace. I was appreciative of that because sometimes with MS, we just get impatient, we want it done. But whether we like it or not, it takes time. So even though time has gone by,
Other interesting topics have presented themselves. I was more than a little bit happy to see that this inverse vaccine idea has not gone away. And in fact, in the article that I'm about to show you, there is a yet another company that's looking into this and doing quite a bit of experimental work on it. You might remember in the first video that I did, I was particularly happy with the fact that this idea wasn't being promoted by just one institution. It, it came out of the University of Chicago, but it was reviewed with some interest to, by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And so that made me feel good. It made me feel like it wasn't just some one-off sort of research, that it, was, it might actually end up doing something. And so I, I was happy to see that the company that's looking into it now, that this article is going to talk about, is a company that's based in Norway, which makes it even more exciting to me, because the more widespread these teams are, the more likely it is they're going to come up with the answer. Let's take a look at this article together and see what the latest is. So here's the article in Multiple Sclerosis News today, NICODE's Inverse Vaccines Ease Disease Severity in MS Mouse Model. New data to add findings that approach may prevent disease developing in mice. And this was published on June 26th of 2024. And they say that two inverse vaccines from NICODE Therapeutics developed to teach the immune system not to respond against its own body worked to reduce disease severity in a mouse model of multiple sclerosis, new data show. This adds to earlier findings that the company's experimental approach and its TV004 inverse vaccine can prevent the disease from developing in mice by making the immune system unresponsive to a protein involved in MS without fully disrupting the immune response. These findings represent progress in our ongoing research into inverse vaccines and autoimmune disease treatment. Agnete Fredrickson, PhD, NICODE's chief scientific officer and co-founder, said in a company press release. A poster detailing the findings titled Tolerogenic APC targeted vaxabody vaccines treat disease in mouse models of experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis and non obese diabetes was presented at the Federation of Clinical Immunology Society's 2024 annual meeting held June 18 to 21 in San Francisco. Michael Einzig, NICODE's CEO said that the company is planning initiatives to advance our efforts in developing an inverse vaccine, also known as a Vaxabody. We are excited about the progress and promise of NICODE's inverse vaccine platform for the treatment of autoimmune diseases, Einzig said. Well, and I have to say, you're not the only one who's excited about that. Inverse vaccines found to prevent paralysis in a mouse model of MS. In MS, the immune system mistakenly attacks the myelin sheath, a fatty layer that protects nerve fibers in the brain and spinal cord. Such attacks cause inflammation and damage and result in a range of symptoms that worsen over time. NICODE's inverse vaccine technology is designed to teach the immune system not to respond against a given target, inducing immune tolerance to that target. It does that by delivering lab-made DNA molecules to muscle cells with instructions to produce an inverse vaccine or Vaxabody. The Vaxabody proteins are then secreted by the cells and once in circulation, they recruit and bind to antigen-presenting cells called APCs. APCs, they say, are immune cells that prevent antigens, any substance that triggers an immune response, to immune T cells, triggering an immune response against those antigens. But Vaxabody vaccines are instead developed to recruit APCs that present antigens to regulatory T cells, which limit the activity of other immune cells. In addition to TB004, the company developed another Vaxabody inverse vaccine called TB036, 
Both are designed to induce tolerance against myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, or MOG, a myelin protein. However, they bind to different targets in APCs. In experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, a widely used model of MS, mice usually develop their first symptoms within one week and tail paralysis within about two weeks. As the disease progresses, paralysis spreads to the hind legs and then to the forearms. In the lab, the mice were given an intravenous or into the vein injection of TV004 or TV036 at seven and three days before experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis was induced. In these animals, disease severity was reduced and tail and hind paralysis were prevented for up to 28 days. Similar findings were obtained when the intravenous injections were given at seven and 10 days after experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis was induced, when some symptoms could have already developed. And using targeted units toward two different receptors on APCs, both Vaxabody inverse vaccines showed potent disease protection in preventive and early therapeutic settings. The researchers wrote in an abstract to the poster presented at Focus 2024. Fredrickson said NICODE is aiming to develop a new class of drugs that are antigen specific, with the potential to be both long lasting and have limited side effects. And of course, both of those factors are critically important if this vaccine is really going to do the job that they're hoping it will do. And it will probably never even get to market if it doesn't do those two things. By exploring different targeting units and their impact compared to antigen delivery, NICODE aims to refine therapies that could offer new options for autoimmune conditions, Fredrickson said. According to Engzig, NICODE is establishing a subsidiary within the company focused on further progressing the immune tolerance platform. Okay, well, this is all interesting to me. I noticed that the article talks quite a bit about antigens and how we have to find the specific antigen. And that was exactly what Dr. Giovannoni said. Remember, I asked him last time if he thought this, this research would bear any fruit. He said that until we know what the specific antigen is that triggers multiple sclerosis, how can we make a vaccine that would stop it? And we were very, very far away from that. Even though NICODE hasn't actually said that they're any closer, it looks to me like they're going almost by a process of elimination, trying different formulations that target different antigens. Sooner or later, they're figuring they're going to hit on the one that is related to MS. And I think, unfortunately, that may be about the way you have to go with something like this, because we don't really understand why it happens. It just doesn't make sense that the body would attack itself. And so this whole idea has been very mystifying to doctors and scientists for the longest time. And maybe just going by trial and error is the way they're going to have to go. But I think that they're looking at the end game here. They're saying, well, if we can figure this out, if we can get to something that will actually work, this will be a real game changer. This will be something that everyone is going to want to have. I know I would, and I imagine that many of you would as well. So I'm just going to say this is good news. I'm going to call it good news, not because it's solved anything, but because they haven't given up. And at this point, I think that's what we can be looking at, is what kinds of research projects are going to have follow-on work despite the fact that there may not be any easy answers. Because MS, let's face it, it's not an easy disease. If it were, they would have cured it already. With all the work that's being done, sooner or later, somebody's going to get it right. But that's all I have for you today. So until my next video, do take really good care of yourself.